According to the Small Business Association, 30% of new businesses fail during the first two years being open. 50% fail during the first five years. Hi, my name is Jeremy Tang. I live outside beautiful Seattle, Washington. And I'm a brand artist, consultant, and speaker. Over the last two decades, I've helped several hundred million dollar companies build brands for aesthetic dentistry, body movement, hospice care, weight loss, and a ton more. I love discovering the unique magic inside every product, service, and brilliant idea. I believe small businesses are the key to real economic growth. So we're sitting down with interesting people, asking questions, listening, and revealing brilliant nuggets of knowledge you can use to build your standout brand. Whatever goes on here is kind of what I just put up because I actually okay. think these in, the in-between moments like this okay. are really interesting to people and I, I think they're great. Well, that's fine. So yeah. the way it works is we have a giant big old timer here. 60 okay. minutes All right. on wow, the clock. Wow, that's a long, that 60 minutes is a long time. It is. Do you, yeah, so you just take the whole thing and you... I, I take the whole thing, add the front, uh, add the back, put it up and I go through and I watch it a few times. And I say, okay, well, at this point we talked about this, at this point we talked about this, and I put um, links to those times in YouTube. So that if somebody wants those particular oh, moments, oh, they, can, they can just oh, click okay. it and it jumps right to those okay. moments so they don't have to watch the whole thing. Right. Or, let's be honest, everybody's watching those things on two, two, you know, one and a half to two times anyway. Yeah. So, you know, that's only 30 minutes, and if they jump forward yeah. and cut through half of it, it's maybe only 15 or 20 minutes. Nobody's yeah. sitting down for the whole thing. They're right, jumping through. Right. And that's yeah. fine because yeah. it still gets exposure for you or you know anybody I'm sitting down yeah. with. Okay, so welcome to Coloring with Jeremy. Okay, I yeah. love it. Is this something you do often, or is this just this is the kind of a... third time I've done this? I love it. And the whole reason for it, just so you know, is people get so nervous around interviews and answering questions, yes. and they're always so in their own head. Yeah. And uh. When I kind of got my master's degree, I realized that, you know, the, the way to get around some of this is actually breaking it down to childish behavior. So you just get into it, you I, enjoy totally yourself. I'm totally down for childish behavior. Um, so you get to choose. You have Japanese okay. motifs. I already know. I already chose mine. Oh, okay. No, not that one. This one. I abstract? Okay. Abstract, yeah. Go for it. Awesome. And we have a set of what started out as 128 Christmas color pencils, and it's probably closer to 160 or 180 in there of yeah. all different colors. Okay. So just jump in and, and choose one and start so it's going. it's totally being creative. It's totally being creative. I love it. The, the, the whole idea, though, is if we balance the left brain, all the logic that we're trying to do things for business and improve things with a little bit of the right brain where we just let go a little bit and relax. I like it. I, I think ourselves. that makes sense. Uh, mine's been colored in. Uh, <laughs> people keep choosing this book. This was uh, Tracy Warren's. Really? The I love Tracy. She was the last one I did. Well, that's such a nice job, yeah. too. She's like, oh, I didn't finish. And when we started, she said, I hate coloring. So Well, she, she obviously she, is good at, at it. At the she end, she that. really loved it. And, and we went and do it again. Uh, Dr. Tanks is actually at the back, and she didn't quite finish. So yeah, This is your wife? This is my wife. Very cool. So, I see what she did. Yeah, go for it. That's the nice thing, is Ooh, you can kind of see what people good. do. How do they get, like, the Oh, I see. They just go darker on the outside and... Kind yeah. of lighten it up in the, oh, I like them some samples and stuff. That's pretty awesome. Right? Yeah. Ooh, I like the stars. No, I want one in the front so it's easier to, you know, because it bends. <laughs> well, and, and I'll tell you this. You can, like it's, per, every page is perforated, so you can pull it out if you like. That's easier no, to color I with. I want to in there so that I, when I'm famous someday, you can say, this well, is... and here's actually what I'm going to say, because I doubt you're going to finish that whole page. Oh, I doubt it too. But I would love to come back out. And give you another chance to keep working yeah. on it, you know, I, at some I love point it. in the future. I love it. Am I supposed to put my name at the top or you'll keep track? I will keep track of whose is whose. <laughs> and when you finish, actually, <laughs> I've got a Sharpie in my bag. Like kindergarten. 
I've got a Sharpie in my bag and you can sign it and you can put it up or I can hold on to it so oh, that when you're famous, awesome. I have it. Yes. Um, Cause I'm really aiming to be famous. <laughs> Not so much, but okay. Well purple, let's just say purple is my favorite see, color. So we'll this, start with This is what I've been working on the last couple of times. Oh, I like the way it's like light on the outside and darker. That's really good. Thank you. You're good. <laughs> Uh, I started as a fine artist. I studied fine oh, art for well, four years in high school. That's not fair. <laughs> okay, I guess I, it's I'm fair. saying it up front. I would try know. though. I want to try to do the the darker on the outside. Yeah, and, do. Cause yeah, that's cool. I've been I've been doing the um, you know they have apps that you can download to your phone, and I've been doing the. Have you seen those? The like, coloring the, apps. Like, coloring book apps like Color by Number. I have. That's the one. Yeah. I love those. Like See, I do those at night when I'm in bed, like if I can't go to sleep. Sure. But my my good. my challenge is that I've I've recognized because I hmm, I used to be big into the technology thing. Give me the iPads, give me the phones, yeah. give, me, give me all that tech stuff. Let me draw on them. You let me use the tablet. You know the pens and things. And what yeah. I've discovered is the connection of this and this doesn't happen with the digital devices. The joy that really? I get coloring or taking notes oh, by isn't hand, that interesting? it um, does not actually happen. And I've read a bunch of studies about this that people don't have the memory that they used to, that they aren't getting into yeah. whatever it is because it's not activating the same reception centers of the brain. It's not activating the same parts. Interesting. So that's why we're actually coloring. I love it. Yeah. And I've heard also that, um, and I think it's true that you know typing something out versus like writing it out it helps you remember it better oh yeah for some reason i mean i don't know writing, why but writing yeah. um it well it's, it's neuroscience writing activates the motion parts of your brain the visual parts of your brain the auditory parts of your brain actually the smelling parts of your brain oh. um all of those sensory inputs all lock together into a stronger signal than typey 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 which is primarily up here when you huh. think about it because if you start typing you're thinking about what you're trying to say and then you're kind of editing it while you're going but if you start writing something by hand yeah yes you're up here but there's so many other sensory inputs that lock all of that together that it's actually more effective for your brain and when you go to write something later or take a note about it 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 actually uses all of those sensory inputs it's sort of like a spider web it hits here and it pulls it right to the center or it hits here it pulls it right to the center yeah that's cool that's cool but it makes sense i mean you know it, i can see why it, i can see why it would but anyway it's getting hot in here it is sorry um we might have to why put that you sorry it's well, because I asked you to turn off the AC for the sound. No, but well, it's no, it's fine. I'm just saying, like you got a long, like a long sleeve black shirt on. This so is I'm... a comfortable shirt that uh, I'm okay sweating in a little bit. Oh, okay. I mean, I have short sleeves on, so, so and, I'm, and I'm already hot. Yes. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the camera just a, a little bit too while we're talking and okay. and we're, we're in your awesome photo yes, studio. I love studio. this. This, this, is, this yes. is a really cool place. Yeah, I love this space. I When I um, decided to quit my corporate job and do this full time, my husband actually built this for me. Yeah, this was when I moved, when we moved into this place. <laughs> so just for those of you who don't know or can't see everything, this was actually, this is the hayloft of my barn. Oh, I believe so that. Imagine, yeah, so imagine when we looked at this place, this whole space was filled from from floor to ceiling with hay. <laughs> and so who knew that this was going to become my studio? Because at that time it was like... Did he have the vision or did you have the vision I had for the it? vision. Nice. Yeah. But okay, it was like... Come on, high five. It's awesome. It's nice. awesome. So yes, I love my studio. And so I'm Tina Tang with Paris Blue Photography. And yeah. All right, so... What was your corporate job that you ran away from? Because I was um, an executive assistant. I've been doing admin work for 25 years. Yeah, kind of fell into it because I needed a job. I was a single mom for, you know, 12 years and I had to make the bills and that's, that's, how, that it works. that's how it works. And it was very good to me, but, you know, photography had always been something I wanted to do. But, you know, it just wasn't feasible. Um, and then I married my husband, and about, like, five years later, I just was done with corporate stuff. So I decided to, yeah, 
All right, Let's so how'd you get into photography? Okay, so funny story. I lived with my grandparents when I was in high school, and my grandfather, uh, who, by the way, was a very grumpy kind of a jerk. Your stepma. Yeah. I mean, he was very strict and just not a very nice man. But, um, but he did. Uh, he was an amateur photographer, and he just took me under his wing and ta taught me everything. I mean, that was when film, you know, it was, cameras were film. Oh, and yeah. He had a dark room, so he taught me everything from, you know, lighting to how to operate the camera to all the way to drying the prints. Yeah. You know? So we printed our own uh, prints, and yeah, it was pretty cool. So that's where I developed that's a, awesome. a love for it. I, yeah. You you just don't find that kind of education these days. It was it was free education and it was awesome. It was like all day every day. That's what I, you know, as much as I wanted to know, what I wanted to know, how much I, you know. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was pretty cool. But that's a uh, that always and I I felt like I had an eye for it. You know, it was like I just could see like I could see things as though I was looking through a camera. So, you know, I, I definitely resonate with yeah, that. Yeah, so you're, you've are you been in the industry. Are you still in the industry as far as, you know, the creative? Yeah, well, when I go set up the camera, that's why I was like, all right, well, yeah. where are we? What is the angle? Let's make sure that this is uh, yes. copacetic for everything. And, and Yeah, so you've, nice got an eye, you've got an eye, too. So that's a, uh, yeah, so that's where that started. And like I said, I spent about 25 years in, in um, basically administrative work in one way or the other. And I was in the army for a little while and did basically administrative work there. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. But basically, that's kind of what my background is. Nice. And it wasn't, it wasn't bad work. Like I said, it was, it was good paying. And um, I'm actually. Well, there's nothing bad to be said about standard yeah. corporate work. Yeah. It, especially admin work. Yeah. It's necessary. There are people who love it. There are people that deal with it and it mm -hmm. pays the bills. But if you if you want to follow your heart, then admin yeah. work is not necessarily something for most people that's going to do it for right. you. Right. And especially somebody who's creative. You know, I I I would always like any time like PowerPoint presentations or you know, any kind of graphic design that they needed, you know, oh, I mean, huh. the companies I worked for were fairly large. Caterpillar was one of them, you know, the tractor company, that yeah. was one. So they kind of had their own graphic design and Team. marketing stuff. But, um, and then I worked for the Everett Clinic for 10 years and that was the job that I had last before I started doing this. Okay. So, but you know, I got to do like the PowerPoint presentations and, um, Bless your heart, because I hate doing PowerPoint presentations. Do you? I really do. Well, you know, it's funny. When I first started my business, um, I named it Paris Blue Productions, because my intent was to do graphic design, web design, and photography, and it was like... A That's fighting off a lot. Oh, my gosh. And, well, what happened was, is that once I figured out, you know, the photography bit, um, I didn't want to do anything else. It was like, I, I just fell in love with it. It was like I fell in love with it. And, and the stuff that I was doing, I mean, I'm still doing it, but working with women um, was, I started working with uh, domestic violence survivors. Oh, so awesome. I would get them in there, in here. They, you know, we'd maybe do their hair and makeup or something. We'd do a photo shoot. And I got really good response from that. Like, it really helped women. That's great. I mean, yeah, it was amazing. And so when I realized how powerful that was, you know, say I get goosebumps just thinking about it. But um, when I think about, you know, how powerful it is. Um, so I've kind of gotten into the, I don't want to say, it's not a rut, but it's just like when I've gotten into the making money part of the business, the business side of the business. <laughs> the stuff you have to do to keep the, stuff rolling. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, the headshots and, you know, that type of thing. It's not that I don't like doing them. It's just that's not my hard work. Sure. You know? Yeah. I mean, I do it. That's more well, than half my business. And it was but... funny because when I sat down with uh, Tracy Warren, I mentioned that I was coming in here today to do this with you. And she was like, oh, my God, Tina, I love her. She's Aww. so great. She did some stuff for me, and it was so great. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I'm glad she's 
happy with my work and yeah we did a headshot um we had three ladies in her office in her in the inspark mm -hmm. office who um needed headshots so i went out there and we just had a blast so that's the way to do it. That's yeah. like to me, if you're going to do photography or you're going to sit down and do something like that, if you're not having a blast, if like, yeah. a, like the music in the background, if you're not cranking that and kind of laughing yes. and having fun yes. while you're doing it, yes. then something's not right. Yeah. I mean, I know, but you know, I, I mean, there are a lot of people, I mean, who, and it's unfortunate. I feel like I kind of paid my dues 25 years doing something that, <laughs> you know, I, that, I wanted to get out of, but, um, I know a lot of people are in that situation where they're, um, they're, they're stuck in a job and they don't know how to get out, you know, like yeah. just to step out and just actually make the move, you know, I mean, I don't know what your background yeah. is, but maybe you've always been doing this, but it's <laughs> hard. Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I went to two different fine art high schools. Um, wow, freshman, did you really? Yeah, freshman year and sophomore year I went to one fine art high school and I learned uh, hardcore color theory and studied different painters throughout history oh and gosh. had to try and emulate their styles and figure out how to like paint like them and, and do things like them. Wow. Uh, and then I changed over to another school for my junior and senior year that was, if you've ever seen fame, it was basically fame for visual and performing arts. Oh, that wow. was that was what our school wow, was. So, so cool. dancers and musicians playing oh, in the halls and practicing yeah. and doing all of these things. Yeah. Um, and and my my junior year, I actually discovered graphic design. This was like ninety five, where okay. the state of software was not where it is now. The state of anything, and I taught myself all the computer programs and everything. I taught myself print production and digital photography. Wow. Which wow. the, the, the digital camera we had, by the way, was like this big. Oh it was God. an Apple camera, and oh my gosh, it, really? it, it it output a one megapixel picture, and oh it was so slow to use. It couldn't capture. It, it shot at like I don't know one sixtieth of a second. So you couldn't like people had to stay still. Yeah. Otherwise, it wow. blurred. Period. Wow. Um, That's crazy. So I kind of I kind of fell into graphic design that way, and. Yeah realized that there was a purpose for my kind of art and after that I, I've actually pursued it as a career and got like two weeks after graduating high school I was in college and oh, was wow. in college for three and a half years got my bachelor's degree joined an ad agency and within a year was wow. art director and I've sort of been going down that path ever since that's so awesome so I'm, I'm yeah. one of those rare people that yeah I, I, rare. I fell into it yes. early and then I just kind of keep evolving with it yeah that's great well, it's all thanks to my mom. Yeah, did, she, did she push you or was totally, she just encouraging? Totally oh, pushed really? me. Really? Totally pushed me because all of my friends were going to one school that was super close. And uh, the first art school was miles away in South Phoenix. So you'll be away from all your friends. So I did, at, yeah, after middle school, I did, I was away from all my friends. Everything changed. I had uh, to ride a bus uh, an hour each way to and from school. So it was, it was wow. one of those things, but she was like, this is important for your future. You have a talent, you have to foster it. And this is what you're going to do. And point in fact, the reason I went to the art Institute of Phoenix for college was because when, in my senior year of high school, she said, I'm going to get a job that makes sure you have the right education for wow. what you're going to do. And she started working for the art Institute of Phoenix. She did. So oh that we, gosh, so we awesome. would get the employee discount on the tuition. Wow. So she made sure that whatever happened, I was walking that path. Oh, you got a good mama. That's great. Yeah. She, yeah. she was amazing. Yeah. I did my plan, like, you know, in high school, I didn't really have any, I didn't have any encouragement. Really. My high school counselor, I mean, my parents didn't have a lot, you know, so it was like, it just wasn't even, it wasn't even an option for us kids, you know, I was the oldest of four, so it wasn't really wow. an option for us, or at least we didn't, we didn't know anything about like grants or scholarships or anything like that. But, um, yeah, the only person who was really encouraging was my high school counselor, but it was still, it was like, oh, that's nice. it's not realistic. So that's why I went to the army was to get the college, yeah. you know, uh, the college fund, that GI bill. Yeah. And um, I didn't stay in long enough to get it, but yeah, uh, that was my whole plan was to go to Columbia college in Chicago and, and, um, for photography and yeah, I just, you know, so it didn't happen, but it did now. But 
That's all that matters. I mean, that you came back around to it is yes. fantastic. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, I commend it's you the, for this. It's in the timing. Yeah. It was just the so, timing. That's always life, isn't yeah. it? I mean, sometimes, sometimes yep. it's just in the timing. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm hearing that on. So, one of the things, um, I, I only met you like three weeks ago, I think. Yeah, and, that sounds about right. And it was right at the end of the evening at a, at a networking mm -hmm. gig. Mm -hmm. And... I don't know. I was I was still getting over sickness, so I was completely foggy oh. that whole entire time. Yeah. But I remember meeting you, and like, like you had that brightly colored hair that just absolutely took my breath away. Like uh, I, I love the vibrancy. Yeah. And then I yes. you handed me your card, and you handed me like the photography uh, like half sheet, and immediately oh, right. immediately I was taken with the the vibrant colors in your photography and the texture of your photography, which. Is, is gorgeous. Thank you. Thanks. Because I don't see that a lot in, in people who are doing right. stuff. I yeah. mean, a lot of people have just kind of boring, flat right. photography these days, and they consider yeah. that enough to get by. Yeah. And I love that you have have this feel that is, frankly, energetic and, and, and I don't know, kind of makes me want to party. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad I'm emoting, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just feel like if I can't express myself like that, it's just like this whole thing that I did yesterday with, you know, the high color and the girl was wearing, you know, orange and, and yellow and purples and stuff like that. It was just like, I did it intentionally because that's me. That's like, I mean, good grief. I mean, if you can't look at me and see that I like high color, yeah. But I'm not doing something. Okay, right. here I wore black yeah. today, and this is really <laughs> poor reflection on me. This is very much the uh, graphic designer black, right. which is not who I am. Normally, I've got like yeah. green and blue and bright colors going. Yeah. And yeah. I, I don't know what was leading me today, but I, I yeah. love that you have the best. In Maybe the purple you going. just knew that this is what was going to be y'all like, you know. I color. was hoping that we would have some color High in color. the background. Yeah. And like, even I can see in the camera, we've got some of the colors behind you going. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I love, I, I was kind of hoping for some of that. Yeah. Good. I delivered. Yeah. You totally yeah. delivered. <laughs> totally delivered. Yeah. But that's kind of, it's like, it just seeps out of me. If I can't, you know, if I, I can't that. express that, you know, and the funny thing is, is, you know, I have a daughter and she's 29 and she's just a lovely, lovely girl. And, um, but she is like the exact opposite of me. <laughs> I mean, she likes color, but she's very conservative and I'm out there and sometimes it's almost like she's the mom and I'm the kid. Not that she tries to. That happens. Isn't it funny though? So much. It's like, but yeah, never saw that coming, but, um, it's just, I just always think it's funny. Like she just, she's never colored her hair, no <laughs> tattoos, you know, just very, you know, I don't know. I mean, opposites are good. She's my best friend. So, oh, that's you great. know, yeah. So we kind of balance each other out. I think. Sure. Same with my husband. He's very conservative and, um, yeah, I'd like to think that I have a little bit of influence on them. Take a little walk on the on the wild on the wild side. side. <laughs> Not that I'm wild, really, but you know what I mean. Just a little color in your life. Exactly. Yeah. What are you gonna do without that? I mean, honestly, I don't know. Honestly. honestly, there there was a uh, there's an interesting study that I that uh, I think it was NASA that that kind of found this. They had this intelligence study that they used with the astronauts, and what they found is they said, okay, well, this is determining that our astronauts are really creative and really intelligent and the ability to put these thoughts together. And then they took this same test and they used it with uh, young children in school. Yeah. And they, it turned out that like 86% of these seven and eight year old children had super high intelligence levels and creativity levels and imagination levels. Three years later, they came back and tested the exact same kids and that dropped from 87 to like 50%. Three years later, they came back and it dropped to 20%. And part of society, part of training, part oh. of who we are to get people to fit into certain... Color inside the lines. Use red for tomatoes. Right. You, you notice I didn't okay. give you any rules about coloring inside lines or anything. I don't do that. I don't believe in that. Yeah. 
Um, I don't either, actually, but it's just like... But that's it's kind of the truth, though, that a lot of what we have in society is breaking down the creativity, breaking down the imagination, and then... I'll buy that. And then we're not as good solving problems. We're not as good oh, yeah. people and relating yeah. anymore because it's too rigid. Yeah, I see that. I can see that. I totally buy into that. Uh-oh, did it break? Just oh. a little. It Look, happens. I have only done one... Not even one circle. <laughs> You're good. I'm too focused on the conversation, I guess, but that's all right. You're I'm trying not to push myself. It's like... Here's the thing. I'm, I'm kind of ADD. That's fine. So it's like if I... If you have to ha get up have and have a dance... I have to only do one okay. thing. If you have to get up and like boogie, have a dance break, it's okay. It's, it's... <laughs> okay, good you, to know. Good you to be know. you. All right, good to know. Because this is, this is me. <laughs> I'm just the like single. I'm probably like I mean I can sing. I can uh, multitask, uh, but if I'm really trying to concentrate, it's like um, when I'm working, when I'm editing on my computer, I've got a huge screen, and so I've got usually I'll have like uh, some kind of TV show or Netflix or something going on this one side. I'm not paying attention to it, but if I don't have it, you know. It's like, um, or, or if I need to really concentrate on something, like if I'm writing a letter or, or mm -hmm. whatever, something like that, I have to turn that off. But yeah, yeah, I like to have that just kind of background noise. Background noise. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I ended up watching. Um, I'm redoing my website right now. I'm kind of doing. I love your website, by the way. Really? Because it's you. just like it's color. Yeah. Well, and it's like, and a big blue banana, um, which I, yes. I had to take off because people were offended by it. And I said, why? Why were they offended? Because it wasn't yellow? Or just... I think it's because it's a banana and it's phallic and yeah, and it's blue. And I'm like, no, it's what? it's an inversion of convention. You know, yellow banana, blue background, standard. No, I'm inverting. And I took it off and now I'm putting it back on because... Good for... I was just going to say. That's, yeah. that's kind of who I am. I believe in standing out like that and, and I'm putting it back on. But I'm, in, I'm redoing the whole thing to try and drum up more business for myself. I put on Bolt, Disney's Bolt, the other day. It's a, a 3D cartoon about this dog who thinks he's an action hero star, and then he gets lost, and he has to do a cross-country trip. It's oh. from, it's from I don't know, the early 2000s. It's super cute, and it, it's the exact same thing. Like, I wasn't paying attention to it, really, but at least I knew that when it was on on Netflix and it was playing, that I could kick back, and when it's over, I spent about an hour and a half working. So, it's a timekeeper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I stopped watching cartoons, animation, period. Um, as soon as my daughter was old enough to not be into that stuff. Why is that? I don't know. You would think that I would want to watch cartoons and stuff. I mean, outside of, like, South Park. I don't think anything. I mean... I, I mean, you know, because I'm just kind of this, like, big kid kind of person, but I don't know. <laughs> It's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of, hey, no judgment now here. when I have grandbabies, I'll probably get right back into it. That's not a rush, that's not a demand, that's just a statement. Yeah, well, I'm waiting, but, you know, <laughs> trying not to pressure. And I know she'll probably see this, but <laughs> she knows how I feel. We're, uh, that's, that's a mom thing to say, though. Oh I mean, my gosh. It, it really I'm so is. ready for grandbabies. I can't even tell you. I never <laughs> thought I would be. I just really, I never thought I would be. Like, I don't want to be a grandma, but I want to be a grandma. <laughs> Aww. I know. I think it's going to happen soon, though. Well, that's nice. Yeah. All right, so talk to me about your photography a little bit. What, uh, what, because I know that somebody's going to go, well, what does she shoot on and what does she shoot with and what kind of, I don't know. Techniques or whatever. Techniques. Yeah. Like anything you'd like to share about what you do okay. that you think is interesting. So I see, and I'm no judgment here, but I see a lot of photographers who they'll have like these elaborate, you know, five light, six light, whatever setups and stuff like that. And you see, I have two lights in my studio. I have the big one and yeah. I got the little one. Yep. And that was the pretty much what I use like 90% of the time. Unless I've got a family in here and I need some, you know, uh, fill light mm -hmm. on, you know, for shadows and stuff. I might I, use I, that light. I like your ring it's light. A it's a cheap light. I use the ring light only to pull out 
you know, oh, color sure. out of eyes. That's really the only, and so people can actually see what's going on back here. But <laughs> um, I use a D800, Nikon D800. Nice. I've had for many years. I like it. I know how to use it. It's not a super expensive camera. Okay. I mean, it's like $3,000. I've got a D800. Do you really? Yeah. Yay! That, that was what I used when I was doing my stuff. And yeah, I, never I mean, gotten it's, a, rid it's of it. a fine camera. There's nothing wrong with it. Exactly. Um, I just don't feel like I need a lot of expensive equipment to do what I do. I think you can take, if you have an eye and you know lighting and you know posing for, you know, portraits, mm -hmm. I think you can do a fine job with fairly inexpensive stuff. Absolutely. So that's my philosophy with that. No judgment again on people who need, feel like they really need, you know. Well, I mean, I know computer people, I know camera people, I know pottery people, and it's always, you got the people who can make do with anything and turn out these gorgeous right. things, right. or the people who absolutely have to have every newest gadget and gizmo and doohickey right. to make it work. Right. And that's fine. I just, yeah. um, I'd rather sink my money into other things, props or, you know, yeah, you just stuff. I have a great I, collection I, of props I, in I, here. I have way too many props, but. There's no <laughs> such thing as too many props. Well, you should see my tiki bar downstairs. Okay. After, it's after totally this. totally badass. After this, I would like to see your tiki bar oh downstairs and maybe take a couple pictures with my phone yeah. because. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I have to say. I just did last Saturday. I did, um. I had a, a one day event that, um, where, you know, girls could come in and, um, uh, it was a hundred bucks, which is like super cheap according to my prices, but, um, come in and do like a half an hour shoot in, at the Tiki bar. I only had two ladies sign up, which I was disappointed about, but, um, the two that I had were awesome and the pictures are flipping amazing. So I'm super stoked about it and I mean, it'll still be down there all summer. But if, if somebody else wanted to do that. I totally want to go see this. Yeah, it's so cool. I even had like live bamboo. We cut some bamboo from our front property. Or I mean our front pasture. And um, yeah, it turned out pretty cool, I gotta say. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's the other thing. I do want to share with uh, whoever's going to see this later. So this is the hayloft. It's in a barn. The property is down like a long gravel drive. Yeah. And it totally does not look like, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like anything I was expecting, admittedly. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's very much disguised for the area, surrounded by tons of woods that it just, it's beautiful. Yeah. You have, you have a beautiful property. <laughs> Thank you. We, we love it too. Yeah. I'm from Illinois, so. Okay. We didn't have, you know, we didn't, we, there's, you don't get this in Illinois. No. And my husband's actually from Brooklyn. So he never had a yard, you know, uh -huh. nothing like this. So he, well, we both absolutely love it out here. I'm, I'm from Phoenix. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm so used to brown and cactus and gravel front yards. Yeah, every, <laughs> everything's gravel and <laughs> yeah. things that jump out and bite you that are oh, yeah. you know, sharp scary. and pointy yes. or stabby. Yeah. So. I lived down in uh, Sierra Vista for a while. Oh, okay. You know that is? I, know, I absolutely yeah. know where that is. Yeah. I had clients down there at one point, so had, oh, really? had, had to make trips down there. Oh, the Sierra Suites Hotel that was down there. Oh, okay. Yeah, lived down there probably for about a year. What, what took you down there? Um, my ex-husband was in the military. Oh, okay. And, yeah. Uh. That was rough. I'm trying to think what the, uh. Uh, Fort Huachuca. Fort Huachuca, yeah. Yeah, Fort Huachuca. Which is like kind of in the middle of no. I mean, shout out to Fort Huachuca. Okay, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Yeah, there you go. I'm, I'm one of the biggest geeks. As soon as the like thing turns on, because I don't know what I should be shouting out to anybody, and I oh. don't. I never shout knew. out anything you want. You right. Shout out coloring books. Coloring books. Yes, coloring books. <laughs> coloring pencils. <laughs> okay. Prisma color pencils. Oh, Prisma. Prisma color pencils. Does it have a thing? I like the names. I don't know why. I think you, have like, the, you have the cheaper Crayola one right there. Names are like really important to me. This yeah. one is Sterling Sunset. Ooh. 
I don't know why I didn't look at these earlier. My gosh, that's like eye candy to me. Like, just give me the name. Pumpkin orange. Yeah, love it. Canary yellow. Yes. And see, I like know all the names for my... <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> they all have like special names. <laughs> this is Roger. He's very nice. This is baby blue. Of course it is. Which, yeah. And that's goldenrod. Yeah. And that's just purple. But, oh okay, well. so so this and the goldenrod are actually like two of my brand colors. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, they sure are, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if you ever want to come up and do something on my goldenrod, you know. Maybe. My, this is actually my favorite color backdrop that I have out of like everything. What? And this isn't even all of what I have, but. Why is um, that? I just, it's just visually, like, I don't know. I just love it. It just gives me a good feeling. Yeah, I mean, the color of my walls is very similar. It is. It's kind of a... Softer. A, it's kind of a vintage-y kind of feeling color. Yeah, right? it definitely has a yeah. 19... Yeah. 59 good kind of... There you go. Right, exactly. Appeal. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I just well, yeah. I, I, I can certainly see this like with those pinup style things that you're doing. Oh my gosh, yes! Like this, absolutely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with like red, yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Let's like throw in a uh, feather boa and oh just yeah, get the heck of it. Well, I got a whole box full of them. I'm sure you could do. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely do. Definitely. So yeah, I'm gonna have to do some yellow here. All right, so I have to ask, uh, how do you normally find clients? Um, well, lately, the last few years, oh, that's a good one. Um, the last few years, I've really been networking a lot. So I joined the Muckle Teo Chamber of Commerce. I'm part of the Marysville Chamber of Commerce. I go to, like, all the um, economic alliance stuff. But anyway, I've been, yeah, I've been doing a lot of, um, networking and it has boosted my business Good. a lot a lot um and models i find because i do work with a lot of models you know um uh, just to do the creative stuff because i can have total creative license that's nice with it yeah i started out going through a, a website called model mayhem have you heard of that yeah used it at one point didn't have good luck never it's you know there's something about expectations and working with people on there that, at least when I was looking at it, mm -hmm. um, it was less than reputable and less than ideal for the people that I was shooting. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I ended up Was with... it like borderline, they wanted to do more like porn type stuff? Yeah. Or... Oh, okay. Yeah. And that was, yeah. and again, that was Phoenix when I, uh, when uh, I kind of did that whole thing okay. and Phoenix was big and... I don't want to say a big blanket statement about Phoenix, but yeah. at least the crowd that From I knew, experience. there was like this undercurrent of S and M and and crazy. Really? Yeah, and the whole what? state is like super Republican, and they pretend what? that they're one thing, and right underneath that, it's like let's put on the leather outfit and gimp out in the dark. Like no way. Yeah, and for some reason, when I was connecting with people on there, that's who was on there. And one of my strict rules is I will do like pinup shoots or I will do, I did a lot of cosplay and superhero kind of shoots. Oh, that's be, fun. Be, well, because I'd be like, all right, you made the outfit. You're using it at, at Comic-Con once a year. Yeah, why so not shoot it? let's shoot it. Let's yeah. do something cool. And then I would yeah. add like special effects like fire or magic or other things to it in Photoshop. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, but I told them I don't shoot nudity, period. Yeah. And that was kind of how I kept myself above that board. Yeah. And a lot of I people. think that's probably pretty except. I mean, uh, the exception for a guy, because I think a lot of guys. And see, I would think it would be the other way. Like the models would say, you know, I can't imagine just throwing myself out there, saying like, okay, I don't know you, dude, but I'm gonna let you shoot with me. And especially like I, I always, you know, warned my girls, the, the ladies that I would. Um, you know, shoot with, mm -hmm. don't ever go to a shoot by yourself with a guy. And that's funny because ever, <laughs> anytime I shot a woman, I would always ask them to bring a friend 
or I would, yeah, yeah. or I would say, okay, and you know, if they don't have anybody that they're bringing, I'd say, okay, my else. female friend Tristan is yeah, going to be here, yeah. or my friend whoever yeah. whoever Julia is going to be yeah. here, and she will be right there, just hanging out yeah, and, and awesome. participating. Yeah, because I don't know, I have I have a very high respect for women, and I don't want to put out the wrong message ever. Yeah. So. Yeah. My mom was a single mom raising two boys. I kind of have a whole different paradigm yeah. about things. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think uh, there's probably not. I think it's too often not the case where guys just think like, "Oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get the." That's always in my mind. It's just like you got these dudes out there who are just like, "Oh yeah, let me just get this girl. I'm a talker." And I've heard, you know, some of the models I've worked with have said that, you know, guys have try to talk them into taking their clothes off and, you know, sure. doing all that. I mean, I guess I want to say that's a natural thing, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a natural thing, you know? I, I, <laughs> I can't give an excuse to it. I don't think it's a, a good thing, and I don't think it's a respectful oh, thing. No, it's not um, respectful. Do I think it's a normal thing? Probably. Yeah. So, you know, I, I can't say much about that. Yeah. Um, Back when I was doing life drawing classes, uh, my father used to joke, you know, Jeremy, you just, you tell the woman on the street, you come back and see my etchings. And, yeah, exactly. Gosh. And, and that was, I was like, this seems so awful and cheesy yeah. and stupid and who would ever fall for that? Yeah, well, I don't know, unfortunately. Unfortunately, people fall for that. Yes. And it's men and women. Yeah. And... Anyway, I mean, guys have to be. I mean, I would think that guys would really be protecting themselves now, or, or, you know, against that kind of stuff because just because of the climate we live in oh, yeah. right now, you know, I was um, kind of worried that I mean, women's lib and all that stuff is great and everything, but I, I just worry sometimes that guys are like, don't they are afraid to even talk to a girl. You know, because the something might be well, they are unless they taken the wrong way. Well, do you in, think that's the case? In my experience, in my life, mm -hmm. what I find is you've got the two different types: the ones that were trained for respect, who are frankly a little afraid, who who don't want to come up and say, "Hey, do you want to go out tonight? Or right. Do you want to have dinner?" Exactly. Because frankly, it can be sort of taken right. the wrong way. And then there's the yeah. other guys who. Don't care. Take advantage. Say whatever it takes, and you know. Right. Unfortunately, Steve their ways into it. Right. But un unfortunately, those are also the guys that you know because of that viewpoint are probably out there killing it in sales. Yeah. And, you know, oh, right, and, right. You know, they use that sort of mindset and that sort of experience to get them. Yeah. Other places. Yeah. So. Shoot up. It's a strange world we're living in right now. It really is. Yeah. I can't imagine being a guy. I mean, there, there are a lot of skeevies out there. But um, there are also but there's a lot, a lot of really good guys. There's a lot of great people in yeah. general. Yeah. Guys and women that are just trying to figure out how to get through and deal <laughs> with yeah. all the weirdness. Yeah, all the new rules and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. And I don't. I don't work with a whole lot of guys. I um. Every once in a while, I'll do a, a guy like senior photos, something like that. Um, which kind of it's it's kind of oh, hard like because, like school senior photos. Yes. Okay. Yeah, like I occasionally. It's That's not like I don't advertise. It's gonna be kind of boring, do you? Oh my gosh, they do not want to be there. I might have worked with one guy that I can think of who was kind of excited about doing it. But yeah, oh yeah, most senior, like most high school boys, they don't, they don't want to be there. Their mom makes them go. And then the mom's over here going like, smile, smile. Todd, smile. <laughs> and I just feel so bad for him. It usually works out a lot better when mom's not there, actually. Oh, sure. Because can... we can kind of create a rapport. And I, you know, I get along with everybody. I mean, I get along with teenage guys, whatever. 
you know, I can pretty much get along with every, anybody and kind of build a rapport. But um, when mom's that, sitting in there and there's an important talent to have when you're behind the camera. Yeah. Well, I'd like to say that that's probably one of my um, skills is being able to build a rapport with people pretty quickly. I'm the girl who's standing in the grocery store line and striking up a conversation with the dude behind me or the old man or whatever, you know. Uh huh. I can do that. That's just because I love people, you know. And I mean, I guess that's why. Yeah. I give people the benefit of the doubt. I just assume you're a good person, a nice person, until you prove me otherwise. Yeah. You know? I think that's great. Yeah. And a me little bit rare. Me too! A little bit rare. Yeah. Everybody's so suspect, you know? Like, uh, suspicious, I should say. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But, what do I want to do now? I need a blue. I need a blue. Oh, no, you're fine. I'll find one. I'm sure I'll find one. I'm not going to steal your blue. There's only like 30 of them in there. I know, right? That's gray. Or silver. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, careful about the metallics. They they say metallic, but it it doesn't lay down as metallic on the paper. Is it just kind of... It just ends up being color. gray or, or whatever it is, unless you press really hard, and it goes from the, the soft color to the hard dark one and then it starts to because all it is is tiny metallic flakes in the lead so right, there's not okay. a lot that actually reflects okay good to know thank you for that coloring tip <laughs> coloring tips from Jerry. coloring tips right <laughs> that's a whole nother video there we go that's good i don't think anybody's actually interested in that series the color coloring tips with color you know pencils. what I guarantee you, if you made a video like that, somebody would watch it. Maybe. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll as, bet. As it is, this thing is taking me forever to color in all of the tiny little boxes and squares and everything. Yeah, it looks good, though. Thank you. So It's going to be amazing. I want to see that when you get done. Well then jump on all the episodes coming up and, and just kind of watch them and you can see because at the end we do little zoom-ins of what we've done and this oh, just awesome. keeps progressing. Awesome. Gotta keep track of pace and time somehow. Yeah. So. No, I like it. I mean, there's no way I'm finishing this. Yeah, for sure. But... Well, that's the thing. There's no way you're finishing any of these pages in one hour. Oh, no. But... I don't think so. Well, especially that one. Right, but I mean, people look at these and go, oh, it's just coloring. It's easy. I'll, I can easily finish yeah. this. Well, if you just color it like, you know, I, I volunteer for my um, church's preschool um, a couple times a month. And I so I have like the three and four year olds. Okay. With my daughter and I do. Actually, my daughter leads it. My daughter's the whatever and I'm the helper. But um, these little kids are so hilarious. They just, they just want to get done. They, you know, they're just scribble. It's like. I don't even try to stay in the lines. But that that age, you know. How old are they? Like three and four year olds. Oh yeah. They are the funniest kids, I swear. Just telling their little stories and Oh, that's a great age for stories. They oh, just Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> They're just like right? and and my and my mom and we went to the and you know, just too cute. Easy to fall in love with those kids, I'll tell you. Yeah, I, uh, I I usually enjoy that age till about six when it's uh, you starts know we smart and off. start smarting off a little bit more. Yeah, but but there's that that age like between two and six where that you know they start to read a little bit or they start to remember the stories, but they can't quite remember to tell them all straight. So they start combining the stories right and and mixing yes. them up with real life and something <laughs> that mom or dad said, and then they start telling you and you're like. Kid, I got no clue what you're talking about, but you? it is super exciting. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, kids used to really make me nervous. Um, and up until a few years ago, and, and then I started working with little girls. So I started out just doing, like, I have this whole wardrobe in my studio here of, you know, women's dresses and just stuff, shoes, high heel shoes and feather boas and stuff like that. And so I had an event. Um, I think I've done four now at this point, but um, 
just where the little girls get to come in and they play dress up and then we do a little photo shoot and they're so that's great oh my gosh i love working with the little girls because they're free they don't have that thing in their mind where they have to be a size two they have to right. you know have perfect skin they have to have perfect you know they're just free so it's actually pretty cool So yeah, now it's kind of, I, I make a point of those things. So what do you call those? Um, what do I call it the last time? I, I kind of, it's just like, I haven't been very imaginative about coming up with names uh, for it, but just dress up, girls dress up, you know. The mom, I mean, I'm, it doesn't, I'm it doesn't starting. Need, it doesn't need to be It doesn't need to be super fancy. like, right. You need something that conveys what it is yes, quickly yes. and get somebody interested. I think it's usually the picture, you know, because I'll put a picture up there in the event. Oh, yeah. And, you know, mom see this little girl all dressed up in high heels and, you know, it's just adorable. So I think that's pretty effective. But I'm doing a, um, a mom and daughter tutu event sometime later this month i can't remember yeah where they wear matching tutus uh -huh. and we go outside and we do you know a little photo shoot that's great yeah um and that one i'm calling um tutu for two so you know okay <clears throat> i have a hard time <laughs> i have a hard time coming up with the names but I don't know what you're talking about. I love that one. That's yeah. great. That one was I. That one I. I'm, I'm okay with. But yeah, some of them are like, uh, like the tiki, the tiki bar. I just, I just said, tiki pinup, tiki bar pinup shoot. <laughs> you know, not very creative. I just want to get them out there, advertise them, and see who shows up. Is that kind yeah, of yeah? You know, and it's just like sometimes I wonder. It's like I put this stuff out there. And it's like, is it the name? Should I come, have if it, like if you know as pe as many people as I thought would sign up? Mm -hmm. If if not that many people sign up, if uh, if it's like, is it the name or is it the pricing or I don't, I but you never know. You, you I'll never know. Do you have any kind of uh, like post event? survey or anything that you give them or send them an email saying, Hey, can you just give me some feedback with like five questions? No, but that's a good idea. Cause that, that would help yeah. guide, you know, some of that. Yeah. Maybe. Give me some insights. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's actually a really good idea. I should be doing that. I should probably do, be doing a lot of things. But. You know what, if, if what you're doing is, is making you feel good and, and mostly working, then do the things that continue to make you feel good and work. Yeah. This is what I've learned so far. Yeah, well, that's good. That's that's good to, you know, good information. But um, yeah, sometimes I feel like I kind of, uh, I am actually going through some education. Do you know who Sue Bryce is? Doesn't sound familiar. She's a photography educator. So business, photography, business educator. Okay. And um, she's very, very popular among the, you know, photography business. Um, crowd. Crowd. Yes, thank you. And um, so I've, I've started, I like joined her website and, you know, she has like all these tutorials and um, classes and stuff, so... I'm, I'm working on that, but I feel like I kind of miss that because I'm self-taught, so I don't have the business aspect of photography. I'm not a businesswoman. I'm a creator, you know? I mean, you have the, yeah, you have the, at least you have the education behind you. Um, and I'm yeah, sure you probably... The education did nothing for business at oh, all. Oh, really? I would, not oh, a I would think that they would kind of teach you how to set things up and think about pricing and stuff like that. No, I mean, you get one class, one class in my bachelor's, one class in my master's, and, really? and not even one class in my master's. It's not about that. They're trying to train you to- Just to be a creative. To be a drone, yeah. to be a professional uh, creative drone. So do you feel like you kind of got, do you feel like it was worth it to go through 
your schooling or do you think it would be it would have been better if you had just kind of done everything yourself and not had the you know so the I, part of it? I got my bachelor's degree in 2000 and the design community had not yet exploded into commodity status which it is now i mean if you can go on fiverr and get a logo for 50 bucks you know i started about three thousand dollars for that same thing but i'm doing a lot of research and understanding and market like right I, i'm doing a lot of stuff to figure out what the right logo is versus somebody on fiverr that's just making something up right so do you like the triangle do you like this font do you yeah no, they don't even do that you okay. pay them they come up with something and then they give it to you and really? say do you want a revision yeah, because I've gone in and used them. Really? I wanted to know what that experience oh, was like. Oh, I did like. not know. I haven't, There's I haven't not, not tried even them. options. Wow. Um, and out of out of college, I worked at the ad agency, and they taught me about business. They taught me about oh. getting clients. Oh, okay. They taught me that what you're designing is not for you. It's not even for your client. It's for the people they're trying to attract. Right. So that the demographic. So that right. the two of you don't even matter in this equation. Wow. And. But to put this in context, I worked for 20 years. I finally got my master's degree in 2017, in December 2017. So I went 20 years before going back oh, to school. Wow. Wow. And, really? and what that did was give me a completely different perspective of what people are doing and how they're doing it. I saw these people who just start designing things without thought and without, you know, understanding what they're doing or what problem they're solving. And I, I absolutely feel like my master's degree was, was worth it. Because I had the experience behind it to right. understand. Without right. that, totally not worth it. Okay. Because you knew the why, the how, the when, the right. all that. What I, what I was yeah. missing actually was was there, there were gaps in my, my process and my thinking. And going back to school mm -hmm. filled in some of that and elevated what I did by a huge degree because I finally understood, like you said, the why behind mm -hmm. every piece mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, Makes sense. But but a lot of times these days I, I meet people who are getting master's degrees who they're too they're too green. They don't know any of that. They don't know They don't have a life experience or on the job experience. Right. Well a life experience yeah. any of it. They don't yeah. have any of it to, to kinda go, ah, this is why this is important. Um mm -hmm. Yeah. And and to me it was everything to to, <laughs> to to go, okay, I see where this all fits in and fits together. It's the the um, jigsaw puzzle right well you know going back to what you were saying initially about you know you see a lot of photographers who their work is just kind of flat it's all I mean that's what I've noticed too and again no judgment I mean they do whatever they want to do and, and I'm sure they make plenty of money from people who want that who just want the regular stuff and and you know it's like and there are plenty of people that just like give me a give me a picture I don't care it's right. not important to me right I don't want artistic interpretation. I just want right. a friggin' bottle right. with and knock out the background. Yes, yes, yep, exactly. But l let me tell you, after years of doing it, that simple little picture, they don't care, ends up costing them two or three times the cost of the photo shoot because we have to fix it in post. I end up photoshopping the hell out of it to give it dimensionality, uh, to uh, give it like some pizzazz. Yeah. So they, they, what could have been done in camera, done with good lighting and, and somebody with an eye like yourself mm -hmm. ends up taking three four five times as long because they have to fix because they didn't invest in the right start there was a great phrase in in my undergrad that one of my teachers used junk in junk out mm. and i totally believe that yeah and when i see artists like yourself that have these like this this amazing beautiful work coming out i'm like this is somebody who understands you know, the thought process of going into it and has the eye to set it up and think about it beforehand. And yeah. I appreciate that about you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to be, I've never wanted to be just like everybody else. Good for like, you. Not just in photography, but any time in my whole life, like even as a kid, I just, you know, most people want to just like, I just want to be like everybody else. I just want, you know, they're, that's fine. That's fine. It's just not the way I am. Well, so it's like when I'm doing things, it's like I'm trying to get a, a little bit of a different, you know, I mean, I do regular stuff like family photos, you know, people just want, it's like, although I have done some pretty cool family photos, like one time I did a, um, everybody dressed like 
dress up like 80s. It was a mom, dad, two kids, boy and girl, and the little girl had a little, like, she looked like Madonna with the thing, and oh my gosh, it was so much fun. But Sounds stuff great. like that is like, that's me. Yeah. You know, that's thinking a little outside the box. I mean, that's kind of what I, I would like to figure out a way to just tell people, like, when you're tired of the old, yes. boring, junky stuff, and you yes. want a photograph that is artistic and fun and vibrant and energetic, yes. and, and not the same old boring yes. stuff, yes, then you're here for them. Call me. I'm yeah. here. I'm here. Call me. <laughs> yeah. But that's kind of like, uh, that's kind of my jam. Oh, I love that. I want to do stuff that nobody else has done before. Or at least nobody's ever done it the way I'm doing it before. Well, and that's, that's the key to everything. Because I, I tend to think that so much stuff has been done before, but it's the combination of all the different influences pulled together. That's what's unique, is, is that remix, seeing all these ideas with your influence and your history mm -hmm. and your yeah. your vision. Yeah. Well, you were talking about um, Elgren. Oh, uh, yeah. And I've actually remade some of Elgren's work, like my own interpretation of it. Sure. But um, I don't know if you remember the picture of it with the girl and she's sitting up. It's with the little alligator on the ground. What, what, that's it. That's 60 minutes. That's Continue. Awesome. I remember the alligator on the ground. Yeah. So I recreated that one several years ago. but. Super cute. Nice. Yeah. Oh, I totally, I totally want to see some, some of these yeah. at some point. Um, but I will kind of wrap this up at that point. Okay. I realize you didn't get a ton of coloring done. Oh, but that's fine. totally cool. Yeah, like I said, it's um, a little 80s. So I would appreciate if you kind of took a couple of minutes and just said, how can people reach you? Okay. And and because, you know, my goal really is to kind of share who you are through these video series okay. and, and really if I can, through my community, bring more attention to you and your work yeah. and get people interested. And my hope is that they go, wow, she is really unique and I want that kind of photography yeah. and you get more work out of it. So be, that's how amazing. can they reach you? So you can go through my website. Uh, that is parisblue.com, P-A-R-R, P-A-R-R-I-S.com. Blue, Paris Blue, my gosh. I don't even know what my website is. Parisblue.com. And, um, or you can call me, I guess, 425-870-3319. You can email me at Tina Tang, Tang, just like the drink, at um, parisblue.com. I Again. think I have a Tang orange somewhere in here. Do you really? I think I do. <laughs> I know, well, I tell people that. It's like, um, and then you can also friend me on Facebook at Paris Blue Photography. And I will say, um... She posts a lot of great content on Facebook, some behind the scenes videos, yes. some great photography stuff. Um, you can see the stuff that she's working on and it, it's really beautiful and I, I really highly recommend you all go check it out. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you for your time today. Thank yeah, you for sitting down you. and coloring with no, me. This is totally fun. I, I was nervous, but this is totally an amazing way to do this. Right? It's yeah. for, for artists and, and, mm -hmm. and actually anybody else, it breaks mm -hmm. kind of oh, yeah. what you're thinking. And Definitely. actually, if you would show everybody what you came up with. <laughs> just like that? Just, yep. Yeah. That's it. That's all I did. That's fine. It, it yeah. looks great. Like I said, we can, the next time you hold some sort of something where you want to promote it or something, I'll happy to come out. You can keep working on it. We'll talk about the next thing it. you're working on. Yeah, and, that's awesome. You know, yeah. and maybe we can drum up some of those numbers so you have more little kids, more little girls yeah. coming in and dressing up. Yeah. And, you know, we'll see. Yeah. And uh, here's what I got done for today. It's beautiful. Thanks. It's come along. That's going to be amazing when you get finished. I just love the, I love the lighter on the outside. The gradient. Just, uh... Artsy. You're an artist. Artsy. You're it's an artist. After 23 years being design and branding oh, yeah, guy, yeah. I'm like, oh, no, at, at my heart, I'm an artist. At yeah. my heart, it's fine art that I'm like, I look at everything I, through that lens. I totally see it. So. Yeah. All right. I totally see it. Thank you so yes. much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, yeah, this is great. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed Coloring with Jeremy. Every episode, we're going to bring you interviews full of insight, 
new perspectives, and interesting people. If you'd like to be on the show, please email me at jeremy at thinktankcreative.studio. It's in the description below. I want to learn about your work, your life, and your beliefs. I'd love to hear tips and tricks that help you succeed in your business. Maybe one single tip will change someone's life, save their house, or wake them up from a depression cycle. To join me on this path, please like, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to learn more about my work and the classes I teach, click the links below. Thanks.